Hi dear students, welcome to our video lecturing. So, in this session, digestion and absorption. In this chapter, we will previous questions on the discuss here. So, here the first question in our material is, in mammals, teeth are, we know teeth, dentition in mammals are different types. In mammals, the dentition includes thecodon. Heterodon and it is diphyodon. Another one is diphyodon. So, human dentition or mammalian dentition is called as thicodon, heterodon, and diphyodon. What is the reason? Thicodon. Suppose this is the upper jaw and this one is lower jaw. We know we have cavities in this jaw bones cavities in jaw bones these cavities are called as theca or alveolus or it is also called as sockets so in humans our teeth are fixed to this jaw bone sockets that is thecodon addition so thecodon means Teeth are fixed to the jaw bone sockets or theca. That is theca dot addition. But here we know different types of teeth are fixed to the jaw bone sockets. Different types of teeth are fixed here. The teeth are not alike. Oral cavity will not be alike. Different types of teeth are there. Different type means different in shape, structure, function. Hence our dentition is called as heterodon. Hetero means different. Don't mean something related to tooth. So hetero don't means the word meaning different types of teeth. So we have four different types of teeth. We have four different types of teeth like incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Hence our dentition is called as heterodon dentition. Okay. Then diphyodon. Di means two. Diphyodon means two sets of teeth in our life because we know our teeth is replaced only one time. Teeth replacement only one time. So total two sets of teeth in our life. Two sets of teeth. They are milk teeth and permanent teeth. Hence our dentition is called as diphyodon dentition. This is from the dentition mammals. So, coming to the question, out of all different types, sorry, in mammals, the teeth are of different types. If the teeth are different types, the dentition will called as heterodon. Then, embedded in the cup like sockets of jawbone, hence our dentition is thicodon. The two sets present in our life, that is diphyodon. These conditions are referred to as, so which one is the answer? The last option, heterodon, thicodon, and diphyodon. So the answer will be option 4. Next, the regions, different regions of stomach are here. Different regions of stomach. Let's see what are the different regions of stomach. Stomach is the J-shaped organ in our body. Stomach, it is the J-shaped organ in our elementary canal. So it is J-shaped, J-shaped organ. And it has the following region. They are cardiac. Fundus. Body. And pyloric stomach. These are the four regions of stomach. Cardiac, fundus, body and pylorus. See this cardiac. There is a beginning of our stomach. The part of stomach in which esophagus opens are called as cardiac stomach. And the word cardiac means this is the region nearer to the heart. So the region nearer to the heart is called as cardiac stomach. Then this dome shaped region, this dome like portion, this dome shaped portion is called as fundus. Usually gas hold in this fundus region, gas hold region and it is highly glandular region because most of the glandular cells of 
gastric gland glandular cells are seen here the digestive juices are secreted by the glandular cell accumulated in this fundus region body is the predominant region of stomach pylorus is the inferior or the basal part of stomach is pyloric stomach basal region and here esophagus opens to cardiac stomach this opening is regulated by a sphincter muscle this opening is regulated by a sphincter muscle called as cardiac sphincter that sphincter muscle is called as cardiac sphincter or gastro esophageal sphincter cardiac sphincter or the gastro esophageal sphincter similarly the stomach opens to duodenum too this pyloric stomach opens to duodenum this opening is regulated by pyloric sphincter that's all so answer the question the labeled region what is one one is cardiac two it is fundus three body four pyloric stomach five the cardiac sphincter or the gastroesophageal sphincter six is the pyloric sphincter first portion here the region nearer to the heart is labeled as what is the region near to the heart is labeled as cardiac so which option one the region labeled commonly filled with air or gas which portion the two fundus the entry of bolus into stomach is regulated way bolus means the food from esophagus food from oral cavity to esophagus then to stomach then that food entry is regulated by which sphincter it is the fifth one the gastroesophageal sphincter or the cardiac sphincter so the answer is option 1 the next one how many statements are correct with respect to the histology of our elementary canal let's see the histology histology means study of tissues so histology of elementary canal means when we take a cross section of our elementary canal this is the lumen this is called as lumen and this is the wall of elementary canal this wall of elementary canal is consist of this one is the outermost layer this outermost layer is called as serosa formed of mesothelium serosa formed of mesothelium second layer is called as muscularis layer second one is muscularis layer but there are two muscularis outer muscularis is longitudinal and the inner muscularis that inner muscularis is circular muscularis inner circular muscularis but in stomach in between this longitude sorry in stomach outer longitudinal is there middle circular muscularis is there and in addition an oblique shaped muscular layer an additional oblique shaped muscularis layer seen in stomach okay the third layer is submucosa layer the submucosa is formed of loose connective tissue blood vessels lymph vessels and the nerves blood vessels lymph vessels nerves etc are seen in submucosa layer the innermost layer that innermost layer is called as mucosa formed of epithelium so these are the histology of elementary canal see go to the question the mucosal layer of alimentary canal possesses gobelet cell gastric gland duodenal gland crypts of lubricant let's see this is the innermost layer mucosa this mucosa has some modifications modifications of mucosa includes gobelet cell crypts of lubricant crypts of lubricant then gastric gland these are the modifications of mucosa of mucosa of our elementary canal and the submucosa then intestinal villi to intestinal villi also modification of mucosa and we have submucosal modification submucosa modified as a gland called as brannes gland a modified gland from the submucosa particularly in the submucosa of duodenum 
the gland modified from the submucosa of duodenum called as Brunner's gland. So here, the first statement, the mucosal layer of elementary canal possesses goblet cell, gastric gland, duodenal gland, crypts of etc. This is a wrong statement because the duodenal gland is Brunner. Brunner is the duodenal gland. It is not from mucosa. It is from submucosa. Okay. Second one. In stomach, an additional oblique muscular layer is there other than longitudinal and muscle. Yes. In stomach, an additional oblique muscular layer is in the inner layer. Then, intestinal villi are more numerous and larger in postural part of small intestine. Yes. We know intestine how the finger like a projection called as intestinal villi. That intestinal villi formation begins from duodenum, jejunum, and it is numerous and larger in ileum. Intestinal villi are numerous and larger in ileum of our elementary canal. It's a true statement. Then, submucosa is formed of thin mesothelium and is rich in nerves, blood vessels. See, submucosa is rich in blood vessels, lymph vessels, and nerves, but not formed of mesothelium. Mesothelium found in serosa layer. No mesothelium in submucosa layer. So, what will be the answer here? The first and fourth statement is a true, wrong statement. So, how many statements are true? Then, remaining T, two and three statements are true. That means, second option, two statements are true. Next is, three types of digestive glands are represented below. Three types of digestive glands are here. Let's see, what are the three types of digestive glands represented here? The three types of digestive glands here, accessory, then submucosal and mucosal glands. Three types of digestive glands, accessory gland, submucosal gland and mucosal gland. Accessory glands are liver, pancreas and salivary gland. These are the accessory glands. So here P is accessory gland. What are here accessory glands? The P contain one salivary gland, then three liver and four pancreas. One, three and four coming under P. Then Q is submucosal gland, which is the submucosal gland Brunner. Brunner's glands are submucosal gland. So what is Q here? The fifth one is Q. Then mucosal gland R, the gland formed from mucosa, gastric gland, Crypts of Leberkin, then goblet cell, etc. are mucosal gland. So here, the mucosal gland are contained 2 and 6. So answer will be option 2. Which of the following are the contents of gastric juice? We know gastric juice contain, gastric juice contain hydrochloric acid, pepsin, renin, castles, intrinsic factors and small amount of gastric lipases. These are the components of gastric juice. So here the answer, which of the following are the contents of gastric juice? Yes, gastric juice contain, yes, mucus too. Mucus also found in gastric juice because we know gastric gland contain mucus necker cell, mucus secreting cells are there. So here mucus, uh, then pepsi hydrochloric acid, HCl, pepsinogen, prorenin, renin in prorenin form, castles intrinsic factor. So these are the components of gastric juice. So the answer will be option two. Next question is um, the diagram of liver. Label the diagram of liver. Let's see what are the different regions of our liver liver the structural and functional unit of liver called as hepatic globules structural and functional unit of liver hepatic globules and here hepatic cells are found in hepatic globule hepatic cells hepatic cells secrete bile the bile is temporarily stored and concentrated. Bile is temporarily stored and concentrated in gallbladder. Bile is temporarily stored and concentrated in gallbladder. Duct of gallbladder is called a cystic duct. 
duct of gallbladder cystic duct then duct from this liver lobules are called as hepatic duct duct from liver lobules are hepatic duct cystic and hepatic duct unite to form a common duct the common bile duct this common bile duct opens to the duct of pancreas it opens to the pancreatic duct and these two duct unite to form a common duct is called as hepatopancreatic duct hepatopancreatic duct or ampulla of water hepatopancreatic duct or ampulla of water this ampulla of water opens to duodenum this opening is regulated by sphincter of odi this opening is regulated by the sphincter of odi so here then sir of label the portion what is one one is liver lobule two gall bladder three the cystic duct four hepatic duct then fifth one is this common bile duct then sixth is pancreas seven is pancreatic duct eighth one is that ampule of water or the hepatopancreatic duct then ninth is sphincter of odi ten is duodenum our question is ampule of water is marked as which one the eighth portion is ampule of marked so answer is option 4 then next one match the column 1 with 2 here the column 1 consisting different types of sphincters and column 2 have locations sphincter of anal internus that means the anal sphincter we know the anal sphincter located in the terminal part of our alimentary canal so here where a the sphincter of anal internus seen in then the guarding the terminal part of alimentary canal so a is 3 the terminal part of our alimentary canal then cardiac sphincter is the location of cardiac sphincter cardiac sphincter located in between the esophagus and anterior stomach so b is 4 esophagus and anterior stomach then sphincter of od sphincter of od between the opening of hepatopancreatic duct into duodenum you already studied so where is the location of sphincter of od sphincter of od located in here the c is opening of hepatopancreatic the first one then the ileocecal sphincter that means opening between ileum and cecum ileocecal sphincter between small intestine and large intestine small intestine end in ileum and the beginning of large intestine is cecum so it is seen in between ileum and cecum ileocecal sphincter then pyloric sphincter pyloric sphincter between duodenum and posterior stomach so which one is the answer the answer will be third option then how many statements are true about the gland pancreas first statement the second largest gland in our body yes pancreas is the second largest gland liver is the gland, largest gland and pancreas is the second largest gland in our body <laughs> then it is heterocrine gland because it has exocrine and endocrine portion yes it is a mixocrine or a heterocrine gland because it has both endocrine as well as exocrine cell but more than 98 percentage of this pancreas are exocrine cell only 1 to 2 percentage of pancreas are endocrine cell so second statements are second is also true statement second third statement islets of langerhans is the major part of pancreas the endocrine part of pancreas is called as islets of langerhans we know it is only 1 to 2 percentage so it is a wrong statement islets of langerhans is a major part more than 98 percent it's a wrong statement because islets of langerhans is endocrine portion they constitute only 1 to 2 percentage of pancreas it's so a wrong statement then beta cells are more numerous constitute 65% of islets of langerhans yes islets of langerhans is endocrine cell having three types of cell alpha cells beta cells and delta cells alpha cells secrete glucagon beta cells secrete insulin that beta cells constitute about 60 to 65 percentage of this islet pancreatic islets okay so here how many statements are true about this gland pancreas here the two statements are true so the three statements are true one two and fourth statement so answer will be option 3 then succus entericus is produced due to the effort of succus entericus 
you know what is the secretion succus means juice endericus means intestine succus juice means intestinal juice intestinal juice is secreted by crypts of leberkin secreted by crypts of leberkin and this crypts of leberkin have two types of cell they are goblet cells and mucus cells sorry goblet cells and brush bordered cells two types of cells are there and these goblet cells secrete mucus brush bordered cells and secrete enzyme secretions of this goblet as well as brush bordered cells are collectively called as succus endericus or intestinal juice so here succus endericus is produced due to the effort of goblet cells in intestinal mucosa s yes. brush bordered cells of intestinal mucosa s yes. runnes gland is wrong so answer both 1 and 2 so both mucus cell goblet cell as well as brush bordered cell secrete the succus endericus so answer is option 4 okay next one match the type of cells listed under column 1 with column 2 type of cell beta cells there is a location of beta cells beta cells are here in this list beta cells are located in uh, beta cells lysozyme histamine insulin pancreatic enzyme yes beta cells are responsible for producing the hormone insulin so 1 to r then mast cell mast cells are the cells responsible for secreting histamine serotonin and heparin so what is the secretion mast cell secrete histamine q so 2q then 3 panet cell panet cells are the cells seen on the bottom of crypts of leberkin the crypts of small intestine and secrete the enzyme lysozyme the antibacterial agent so panet cells what is panet cell secretion pan it is pan uh, lysozyme p then acinar cells acinar cells are the exocrine cells of our pancreas so it secrete pancreatic enzyme so answer will be option two then the three secretion that are mixed with the food in small intestine they are what are the secretion that are food in small intestine yes small intestine receive bile small intestine receive pancreatic juice as well as bile through the hepatopancreatic duct and the small intestine itself have a gland is called as crypts of leberkin so small intestine re receive a mixture of fluid like bile pancreatic juice as as well as intestinal juice or succus endericus so here the answer is bile juice pancreatic juice and succus endericus option 4 read the following statement selected and wrong statement select the wrong statement lysozyme present in saliva act as an antibacterial agent that prevent infection yes we have lysozyme in our saliva it is a antibacterial agent which always dissolve the protein polysaccharide coating on the surface of this bacteria that's a true statement about about 30 percentage of starch is hydrolyzed in buccal cavity by salivary amylase buccal cavity by salivary amylase into disaccharide to maltose yes 30 percent of polysaccharides are hydrolyzed in our oral cavity by the enzyme salivary amylase enzyme about 30 percent of polysaccharide next trypsinogen is converted into active trypsin by the action of enterokinase enterokinase is an enzyme secreted by intestinal mucosa that enzyme activates trypsinogen to trypsin the trypsin in turn activate chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin procarboxypeptidase to carboxypeptidase so it's a true statement further on intestinal mucosal epithelium house multicellular gland called as goblet cell which secrete intestinal mucus mucosal epithelium has the multicellular gland goblet is a wrong statement because goblet cells are unicellular gland they are not multicellular goblet cells are the example for unicellular gland that is the isolated secretory cells are unicellular gland so here the fourth statement is not a true statement is a wrong statement so the answer will be option four if for some reason our goblet cells are not functional this will adversely affect what is the role of uh, goblet cells in our body is secreting mucus so here are the options production of somatostatin it not affect the function of somatostatin secretion of sebum not affected sebum is secreted by 
the sebaceous gland in our skin then smooth movement of food downward to the intestine yes it is the role of mucus one of the role of mucus is ductus lubricans through the alimentary canal this mucus facilitate the easy movement of food through the alimentary canal yes that is the function food easy alimentary canal would move in angle that mucus secretion the result time matter on so true statement the digestion of protein there is no role of mucus for the digestion of protein so here the answer is if some reason goblet cells are non-functional this will adversely affect the smooth movement of food downward in the intestine so answer is option 3 next select the option for the correct completion pepsinogen to pepsin pepsinogen is converted to pepsin by the enzyme sorry by the digestive juice hydrochloric acid hcl so what is a here a is hcl proranin HCL act on proranin and convert proranin to renin. Proranin is the inactive form of milk protein enzyme renin. Here this is the active milk protein enzyme found only in infants, renin. Then, so B is renin. R E double N I N renin. Namal matter renin padikinunda. R E N I N renin. This renin is not from stomach. It is secreted by the juxtaglomerular cells of kidney. So here the B is R E double N I N renin. Then what is seen? Casein. Renin convert casein to what is the role of renin? Renin convert casein to paracasein. Renin convert casein to paracasein. Paracasein spontaneously combine with the calcium ion to form calcium para casinate that calcium para casinate is converted to peptones by enzyme pepsin this is the digestion by the action of renin so here casein is hydrolyzed to para casein so c is para casein c para casein then d Calcium paracassinate. Pepsin convert this calcium paracassinate to peptones. Then D. Elastin is a protein that elastin is converted to dipeptide by the enzyme elastase. So what will be the answer? Answer will be option 4. Then the summary of physiology of digestion is given below. Mark the incorrect one. Incorrect one not yet. First one. Starch or glycogen to maltose by tyalin amylopsin then maltose is converted to glucose by maltase or isomaltase yes it's a true statement the reaction is same correct then protein to peptones by pepsin pepsin trypsin chymotrypsin they are needed for the conversion of pepsin protein to uh, peptones the peptones to peptides by carboxypeptidase then peptides to amino acid by amino peptidase and dipeptidase yes it is true then fat into diglyceride by the enzyme lipase. Raw, it's true, yes, true. Diglyceride to monoglyceride and fatty acid by again lipase. Monoglyceride to fatty acid and glycerol again by lipase. So it's true. Fat into micelles by lipase is wrong. Fat is converted to micelles by with the help of bile salt of liver. Bile salt, amphipathic molecule. That bile salt is needed for the emulsification of fat. The bile salt convert the large fat globule to small fat droplets are called as micelles. So here answer is option 4. The incorrect one is option 4. Then select the correct option to complete the table. Here the gross calorific value and physiological fuel value are given here. What is this physiological fuel value and gross calorific value? Physiological fuel value means Physiological fuel value means Actually the energy Released by the combustion of one gram of nutrient in the body of an organism When one gram of nutrient break down in the body of an organism a particular amount of energy releases that energy released by the breakdown of one gram of nutrients in 
the body of an organism is called as physiological fuel value of nutrients okay so that physiological fuel value of nutrients carbohydrates 4 kilo calorie protein sars of 4 kilo calorie lipids 9 kilo calorie these are the physiological fuel value of nutrients next gross calorific value means the energy released by the combustion of 1 gram of nutrient in a device or in a bomb calorie meter physiological fuel value body will break down chimble release in energy angle when 1 gram of nutrient break down in a device like in a bomb calorie meter a particular amount of energy releases that energy is known as the gross calorific value gross calorific value of carbohydrates carbohydrates 4.1 proteins 5.65 lipids 9.45 so here the answer carbohydrate gross calorific value true physiological value is carbohydrate 4 kilocalorie proteins gross calorific value is 5.65 then fat physiological fuel value is 9 kilocalorie so the answer will be option 3 okay then some additional questions are here mark the matching set first one Sanguivos. What is sanguivos? Blood feeding. Blood feeding animals are called as sanguivos. Type of food in sanguivos are not nectar. Blood is the type of food in sanguivos. Animals example butterfly honeybee is wrong. So first one is wrong. Second one. Coprophagus means feces feeding. They feed undigested waste or feces feeding or dung feeders are called as coprophagus. Coprophagus the food is not blood their food is type of food is feces okay then osmotrophs that means they absorb water osmotrophs not on fecus osmotrophs with their own feces then insects insectivores yes they feed insects insect feeding animals are called as insectivores animals or plants they are called as insectivores example frog lizard they feed insects so they are insectivores next what will happen if the secretion of parietal cells of gastric gland is blocked with an inhibitor what is parietal cells of gastric gland function the parietal or oxyndic cells the parietal or oxyndic cells of gastric gland secrete hydrochloric acid and castles intrinsic factor Castles hydrochloric acid function prevent infection. Hydrochloric acid prevents infection. Activation of pepsinogen to pepsin. Activation of pro renin to renin. Then HCl is needed for. inactivate the enzyme stop the action of salivary amylase enzyme in sto stomach stop the action of salivary amylase enzyme provide optimum pH 1.8 for the enzyme pepsin these are the functions of hydrochloric acid then Castell's intrinsic factor function is absorption of vitamin B12 or Cyano, Cobal, Amen. Absorption of vitamin B12 or Cyano, Cobal, Amen is the function of um, Castell's intrinsic factor. So, what will happen if the secretion of parietal cells of gastric gland is blocked with an inhibitor? There is no secretion of hydrochloric acid and Castell's intrinsic factor. We have the options. The pH of stomach will decrease abruptly pH of the stomach not decrease abruptly because we know the parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid. If parietal cell is there which is secrete hydrochloric acid then only reduce pH. pH is 7 third and low pH. That is acidic pH. pH decrease is acidic. Wrong. Gastric gland parietal cell is not HCL. 
പിന്നോട് ഒരിക്കലും ലോ പി എച്ചിലേക്ക് പോകില്ല ദിൻ എൻട്രോകൈനസ് വിൽ നോട്ട് റിലീസ്ഡ് ഫ്രം ഡിയോഡനൽ ദർ ഇസ് നോ റിലേഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ എൻട്രോകൈനസ് ആൻഡ് പെരൈറ്റൽ സെൽസ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റൊമക് ദെൻ ഗ്യാസ്ട്രിക് ജ്യൂസ് വിൽ ബി ഡെഫിഷ്യൻ്റ് ഇൻ എച്ച് സി എൽ ആൻഡ് എൻട്രോകൈനസ് എച്ച് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഡെഫിഷ്യൻ്റ് ഇൻ എൻട്രോകൈൻ എച്ച് സി എൽ ബട്ട് നോട്ട് എൻട്രോകൈനസ് ദെൻ ഇൻ ദ ആബ്സൻസ് ഓഫ് എച്ച് സി എൽ സെക്രീഷൻ ഓഫ് ഇനാക്റ്റീവ് പെപ്സിനോജിൻ ഈസ് നോട്ട് കൺവേർട്ടഡ് ടു ആക്റ്റീവ് ആൻഡ് സെം പെപ്സിൻ ദർ ഇസ് ആൻസർ ഇൻ ദ ആബ്സൻസ് ഓഫ് എച്ച് സി എൽ ദ പെപ്സിനോജിൻ ഈസ് നോട്ട് കൺവേർട്ടഡ് ടു പെപ്സിൻ സോ ഹിയർ ദ ആൻസർ ഈസ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഫോർ നെക്സ്റ്റ് the digested food is first absorbed and taken to liver by digestion we know we have small intestine to liver circulation there is a circulatory pathway from intestine to liver after digestion nutrients are first absorbed to the blood through the blood this transported to liver this circulation is called as hepatic portal circulation this is called as hepatic portal circulation hepatic portal circulation then through the hepatic portal vein through the hepatic portal vein okay so here digested food is absorbed and taken by liver by which one renal portal system is wrong hepatic portal vein is true so answer is option 2 hepatic portal vein then observe the diagram of small intestinal mucosa and chylomicrons are accumulated here let's see we know our small intestine mucosa get modified as intestinal villi mucosa get modified as intestinal villi suppose these are the intestinal villi this projections are called as villi and this villi have columnar cells are here the columnar cells are here then the large lymph supplies here the large lymph vessels to supply for absorption of nutrients from this villi this large lymph vessels are called as lacti not only lymph vessels capillaries are also there blood capillaries are also there after a fat rich diet fat molecules are absorbed to the lacteals in the form of chylomicrons fat molecules are absorbed to the lacteals in the form of chylomicrons so observe the diagram of small intestinal mucosa here the labeled portion one is villi two is lacteal three scapularies four is artery five veins so here the chylomicrons are accumulated in the part label here chylomicrons are accumulated in lacteal so the option 2 is the answer 2 is chylomicron then absorption of digested food here different types of absorption first one is active transport two fructose and amino acid facilitated three water by osmosis then glycerol glucose amino acid by active transport monoglyceride the fifth one is a simple diffusion so the process labeled 3 is what is the absorption of water by osmosis so answer option 3 by osmosis okay so we completed the first chapter from our human physiology digestion and absorption okay so let's start with a new topic breathing and exchange of gases breathing and exchange of gases let's go through the questions from this chapter first question which is not the function of the conducting part of respiratory system so we have to learn what is the conducting part and exchange part of respiratory system See, our respiratory system consists of nostrils. Nasal cavity. Pharynx. Larynx. Trachea. primary bronchi
secondary bronchi primary bronchioles and terminal bronchioles through this terminal bronchiole air enters to the alveoli of our lungs here this conducting part of respiratory system the part from nostrils to terminal bronchioles are called as the conducting part of respiratory system so which is the conducting part the part from nostrils to terminal bronchiole part from nostrils to terminal bronchioles are called as the conducting part of respiratory system okay and this conducting part how ciliary cells mucus secreting cells then highly vascular region vascular mean blood vessels are also there so this conducting part function it clear the air from foreign particle clear the air from foreign particle it make the air warm it made the air warm so it warm the air then it humidifies the air so functions include what is conducting part the part from nostrils to terminal bronchiole conducting part its functions include it clear the air warm the air and humidifies the air clear warm and humidifies the air one of the function second function as the term implies us its function is conduction conducting part means it conduct air from atmosphere to alveoli so it conduct air from atmosphere to alveoli it conduct the air from atmosphere to alveoli atmosphere to alveoli means from atmospheric temperature to our body temperature atmospheric air lulla temperature ne sorry atmospheric temperature lulla air ne nammada body temperature like transfer cheyana cheynathu so it conduct the air from atmospheric temperature to alveoli or to the body temperature conduct air from atmosphere to alveoli or to body temperature these are the functions of conducting part of our respiratory system so our first question endha parnadu which is not the function of conducting part of respiratory system here transport of air to alveoli yes it is the function of air conducting part clear the air from foreign particle yes it clear the air from foreign particles humidifies the air humidifies that is also function of conducting part of respiratory system it is the diffusion of oxygen and site of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide is wrong statement why because the site of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide is you know alveoli and their capillaries alveoli are highly vascular richly supplied with blood vessels oxygen from that atmosphere reaches the alveoli so from the alveoli air, air oxygen diffuses to the blood from the blood carbon dioxide diffuses to the alveoli so alveoli and their capillaries constitute the actual site of diffusion of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide so the actual site of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide are the alveoli and their capillaries not the conducting part this region is called as the respiratory part this is called as respiratory part or the exchange part respiratory part or exchange part okay so here the answer is option 4 next one next is select the incorrect statement select the incorrect statements in man 
vocal cords are present in larynx what is larynx in humans the larynx is called as voice box or sound box larynx is called as voice box or sound box in humans larynx is called as voice box or sound box because inside the larynx contain the sound producing structures these sound producing structures are called as vocal cords inside the larynx contain the sound producing structures these are called as vocal fold vibrations in vocal cord during exhalation especially during exhalation vibrations of vocal cord during exhalation produce voice in man so that vocal cords are found in larynx hence in humans larynx is called as the voice box or sound box yes it's a true statement next one trachea divides into bronchi at the level of seventh thoracic vertebrae let's see you know trachea trachea called as windpipe this is a straight to trachea this trachea divides into two bronchus these two bronchus are togetherly called as primary bronchi two bronchus or this is the primary bronchi this trachea divides into two bronchus at the level of let's see you know suppose this is the dorsal portion of the body and this is the ventral portion of the body and here suppose this is diaphragm this diaphragm partition the body into upper <coughs> thoracic cavity upper region is thoracic cavity and lower abdominal cavity and we have a rod which passes through the dorsal side of our body is called as vertebral column the vertebral column passes through the dorsal side of the body and in this vertebral column first seven vertebrae passes through the neck region next 12 passes through the thoracic region called as thoracic vertebrae thoracic vertebrae so thoracic region contain total 12 thoracic vertebrae in this 12 the sixth thoracic vertebrae seen at the middle of thoracic cavity yes total 12 anengil sixth thoracic vertebrae thoracic cavity middle la irikanam kaanandathu so fifth is also located at the middle of thoracic cavity fifth um thoracic cavity da middle aanu kaana see ventral to this thoracic cavity this <coughs> ventral the uh, trachea passes or wind wind pipe passes through the ventral side of the body at the level equivalent to this fifth thoracic vertebrae <coughs> at the level of fifth thoracic vertebrae this trachea branches at the level of fifth thoracic vertebrae this trachea branches to form two bronchus so trachea divide at the level of fifth thoracic vertebrae not up to the level of seventh thoracic vertebrae <coughs> so the second option is incorrect one third one lecithin cover the alveoli as surfactants in our alveoli there are two types of cells in our alveoli <coughs> alveolar wall consists of two types of cells 90% percent, 95% squamous cells 95% percent squamous epithelial cells 5% percent cuboidal cells this cuboidal cells secrete a pulmonary surfactant called as lecithin like a pulmonary surfactant lecithin is a phospholipid so secrete the pulmonary surfactant lecithin this lecithin avoids surface tension in alveoli it's a true statement then alveolar consists of functional unit to four lungs yes we have alveoli each lungs consists of about 150 million alveoli each lung consists of about 150 million thus total two lungs have 300 million alveoli these alveoli are the functional unit of four lungs so the incorrect one is option 
two. Second one is the answer. Then third question. Diffusion membrane is alveoli made up of three major layers, namely. Let's see what are the diffusion membrane in our alveoli. Diffusion membrane in alveoli. See in our alveoli. Suppose this is the alveoli and this is alveolar cavity. This from the wall of alveoli. This is the wall of alveoli and this is alveolar cavity. Alveolar cavity and this is the wall of alveoli. This wall of alveoli is formed of simple squamous epithelium. Wall of alveoli composed of simple squamous epithelium is there. This simple squamous epithelium rest on a basement membrane. This simple squamous epithelium rest on a basement membrane. Then, these alveoli are highly vascular too, which is supplied with the blood vessels. Highly vascular. So, this is the alveolar capillary. This is called as alveolar capillary. And here, this from the wall of alveoli, alveolar capillary. This is the wall of alveolar capillary. This wall of alveolar capillary is formed of endothelium. So, this is the endothelium of alveolar capillary. It also have a basement membrane. So, this alveolar air is separated from the blood through these three membranes. As a result, the diffusion takes place through these three membranes. Oxygen diffuses to blood, then carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses to the alveoli through these three membranes. These are called as diffusion membrane. So, this diffusion membrane is formed of three major layers. They are the simple squamous epithelium of alveoli, endothelium of alveolar capillary and the basement membrane in between them. The total thickness of these three layers are less than 1 millimeter. Total thickness is less than 1 millimeter. This is favorable for increasing the rate of diffusion of respiratory gases. So here the diffusion membrane is made up of three major layers. Namely, the thin transitional epithelium wrong. The thin squamous epithelium of alveoli is yes. endothelium of alveolar capillary is true. And the basement membrane in between them. So the answer is option 2. Next, during inspiration, what happened during inspiration in our body? Inspiration means the inflow of air. Suppose this is lungs. This is the volume of lungs in dorsal ventral as well as anterior posterior axis. Before the beginning of breathing, this is the volume of lungs and pressure inside the lungs is about 760 millimeter of mercury. Before the beginning of breathing, the pressure inside the lungs is about 760 mm mercury. That means it is equivalent to atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is also, one atmospheric pressure is also 760 mmHg. It is equal to atmospheric pressure. Okay. Then we know the lungs are covered by pleural membrane and our lungs are located in an airtight thoracic cavity. That airtight thoracic cavity is formed of dorsal vertebral column, dorsal vertebral column. The ventral one is sternum. Dorsal vertebral column, ventral one is sternum. The lateral ribs are there. Ribs are seen on the lateral side and lower diaphragm. Okay. At this stage, 
we have different types of structures involved in breathing they are ribs involved in breathing sternum involved in breathing diaphragm involved in breathing diaphragm is a muscular structure is a muscle involved in breathing then two types of muscle external and internal intercostal muscles external and internal intercostal muscles these muscles are also involved in breathing during inspiration external intercostal muscle contract and simultaneous with the external intercostal muscle diaphragm also contract when this external intercostal muscles contract this ribs and sternum moves upwardly from this position when external intercostal muscles contract ribs and sternum moves upwardly as a result the thoracic cavity volume increases in dorso ventral axis okay when thoracic cavity volume increases the lung volume also increases similarly when the diaphragm contract this diaphragm become flattened and moves inwardly and downwardly so first of all this diaphragm flattened and moves inwardly and downwardly that means the thoracic cavity volume increases in anterior posterior axis when this thoracic cavity volume increases the intrapulmonary volume also increases so the lung volume increases we know the universal gas law the boyle's law the volume is inversely proportional to pressure so here when the volume of lungs increases what happened to the pressure inside the lungs the pressure inside the lungs decreases now the intrapulmonary pressure decreases from 760 to 759 mm hg lung pressure decreases what happened now the intrapulmonary pressure is at lesser than atmospheric pressure air move from atmosphere to lungs e air atmosphere nam lungs like move you this is called as mechanism of inspiration idana inspiration allengil inflow of air or the mechanism of inspiration nu parayga okay then when this external intercostal muscles and diaphragm relax a rendu muscle relax cheyumbodu ribs sternum and diaphragm returns to their original position idellam avare original position like varum again what happened to the lung volume lung volume decreases lung pressure increases air move from at lungs to atmosphere that is a mechanism of expiration so here during inspiration inspiration time la endana sambhavikkuna question intrapulmonary pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure yes it is very necessary to lower the pressure inside the lungs than atmospheric pressure engil mathrale inspiration nadakku so the true statement aanu the intrapulmonary pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure true second one intrapulmonary pressure is higher than atmospheric pressure is wrong that is favorable for exp expiration not true then external intercostal muscle contract as we know during inspiration the external intercostal muscle contract which causes inspiration so what will be the answer option 4 1 and 3 are true regarding inspiration then our alveoli suppose this is the alveoli and this is alveolar cavity this from the wall of alveoli this is the wall of alveoli and this is alveolar cavity alveolar cavity and this is the wall of alveoli this wall of alveoli is formed of simple squamous epithelium wall of alveoli composed of simple squamous epithelium is there this simple squamous epithelium rest on a basement membrane this simple squamous epithelium rest on a basement membrane then this alveolus are highly vascular too which is supplied with the blood vessels 
highly vascular. So this is the alveolar capillary. This is called as alveolar capillary. And here, this form the wall of alveoli, alveolar capillary. This is the wall of alveolar capillary. This wall of alveolar capillary is formed of endothelium. So this is the endothelium of alveolar capillary. It also have a basement membrane. So this alveolar air is separated from the blood through these three membranes. As a result, the diffusion takes place through these three membranes. Oxygen diffuses to blood, then carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses to the alveoli through these three membranes. These are called as diffusion membrane. So this diffusion membrane is formed of three major layers. They are the symbol squamous epithelium of alveoli, endothelium of alveolar capillary and the basement membrane in between them. The total thickness of these three layers are less than 1 millimeter. Total thickness is less than 1 millimeter. This is favorable for increasing the rate of diffusion of respiratory gases. So here the diffusion membrane is made up of three major layers, namely the thin transitional epithelium wrong, the thin squamous epithelium of alveoli is, yes. endothelium of alveolar capillary is true and the basement membrane in between them. So the answer is option 2. Next, during inspiration, what happened during inspiration in our body? Inspiration means the inflow of air. Suppose this is lungs. This is the volume of lungs in dorsal ventral as well as anterior posterior axis. Before the beginning of breathing, this is the volume of lungs and pressure inside the lungs is about 760 millimeter of mercury. Before the beginning of breathing, the pressure inside the lungs is about 760 mm mercury. That means it is equivalent to atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is also, one atmospheric pressure is also 760 mmHg. It is equal to atmospheric pressure. Okay. Then we know the lungs are covered by pleural membrane. And our lungs are located in an airtight thoracic cavity. That airtight thoracic cavity is formed of dorsal vertebral column. dorsal vertebral column the ventral one is sternum dorsal vertebral column ventral one is sternum the lateral ribs are there ribs are seen on the lateral side and lower diaphragm okay at this stage we have different types of structures involved in breathing. They are ribs involved in breathing, sternum involved in breathing, diaphragm involved in breathing. Diaphragm is a muscular structure, it is a muscle involved in breathing. Then two types of muscle, external and internal intercostal muscles external and internal intercostal muscles these muscles are also involved in breathing during inspiration external intercostal muscle contract and simultaneous with the external intercostal muscle diaphragm also contract when this external intercostal muscles contract this ribs and sternum moves upwardly from this position. When external intercostal muscles contract, ribs and sternum moves upwardly. As a result, the thoracic cavity volume increases in dorsal ventral axis. Okay. When thoracic cavity volume increases, the lung volume also increases. Similarly, when the diaphragm contract, 
this diaphragm become flattened and moves inwardly and downwardly so first of all this diaphragm flattened and moves inwardly and downwardly that means the thoracic cavity volume increases in anterior posterior axis when this thoracic cavity volume increases the intrapulmonary volume also increases so the lung volume increases you know universal gas to the boils low the volume is inversely proportional to pressure so here when the volume of lungs increases what happened to the pressure inside the lungs the pressure inside the lungs decreases now the intrapulmonary pressure decreases from 760 to 759 mm hg lung pressure decreases what happened now the intrapulmonary pressure is at lesser than atmospheric pressure air move from atmosphere to lungs e air atmosphere nam lungs like move you this is called as mechanism of inspiration idana inspiration allengil inflow of air or the mechanism of inspiration nu paraya okay then when this external intercostal muscles and diaphragm relax are and the muscle relax cheyumbodu ribs sternum and diaphragm returns to their original position ഇതെല്ലാം അവരുടെ ഒറിജിനൽ പൊസിഷനിലേക്ക് വരും എഗെയിൻ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൺ ടു ദ ലങ് വോളിയം ലങ് വോളിയം ഡിക്രീസസ് ലങ് പ്രഷർ ഇൻക്രീസസ് എയർ മൂവ് ഫ്രം ലങ്സ് ടു അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ മെക്കാനിസം ഓഫ് എക്സ്പിരേഷൻ സോ ഹിയർ ഡ്യൂറിങ് ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ ടൈമിൽ എന്താണ് സംഭവിക്കുന്ന ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇൻട്രാ പൾമോണറി പ്രഷർ ഈസ് ലോവർ ദാൻ അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയറിക് പ്രഷർ യെസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി നെസസറി ടു ലോവർ ദ പ്രഷർ ഇൻസൈഡ് ദ ലങ്സ് ദാൻ അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയറിക് പ്രഷർ എങ്കിൽ മാത്രമല്ല ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ നടക്കൂ സോ ദ ട്രൂ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെൻ്റ് ആണ് ദ ഇൻട്രാ പൾമോണറി പ്രഷർ ഈസ് ലോവർ ദാൻ അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയറിക് പ്രഷർ ട്രൂ സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ ഇൻട്രാ പൾമോണറി പ്രഷർ ഈസ് ഹയർ ദാൻ അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയറിക് പ്രഷർ ഈസ് റോങ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫേവറബിൾ ഫോർ എക്സ് എക്സ്പിരേഷൻ നോട്ട് ട്രൂ ദൻ എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ ഇൻ്റർകോസൽ മസിൽ കോൺട്രാക്ട് ജസ് വി നോ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ ദ എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ ഇൻ്റർകോസൽ മസിൽ കോൺട്രാക്ട് വിച്ച് കോസസ് ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ സോ വാട്ട് വിൽ ബി ദ ആൻസർ ഓപ്ഷൻ ഫോർ വൺ ആൻഡ് ത്രീ ആർ ട്രൂ റിഗാർഡിംഗ് ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ then which one of the following these show the least value 